Let's continue the example from the previous video by setting up the integral in cylindrical coordinates. Recall that the integral we're trying to set up is the triple integral over q of z dv, where q is the solid bounded below by z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared, which is a cone, and above by x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4, a sphere. If we're going to work in cylindrical coordinates, it helps to remember that in cylindrical coordinates, x is our cosine theta, y is our sine theta, z equals z, and dv is r dr d theta dz. Let's start by rewriting the equations for the top and bottom surfaces in cylindrical coordinates. So first of all, for the top, the sphere, we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4. Um, since x squared plus y squared is r squared, this is the same as r squared plus z squared equals 4. So this is one great equation for it. Uh, we can also solve for z to say that z squared is 4 minus r squared. So z is plus or minus the square root of 4 minus r squared. Remember, though, that we're only taking the top half, so it would be a positive. So I can relabel this top surface as z equals the square root of 4 minus r squared. For the bottom surface, which is the cone, We have z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. But again, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And the square root of r squared is the absolute value of r. And since we're keeping r positive, this is just z equals r. So now we're at least ready to begin uh, setting up what the integral will be in cylindrical coordinates. Because if I put my dz on the inside, and I see a line up through the surface, then notice that it will enter on the cone, z equals r, and exit on the sphere. So if we set up our integral, and I put dz on the inside, I'll be going from z equals r to z equals the square root of 4 minus r squared. Now before I get too far ahead of myself, let's start filling in the integrand. Remember I'm trying to set up z dv. Well, spherical coordinates, z is just z, and dv is r dr d theta dz. So I have an r dr d theta dz, but I said I was going to put the dz first. So just make sure that you see how things match up. This z is this z, and r dz dr d theta is taking the place of dv. Okay, so those are the bounds for z. Now we need to take the solid and project it along that line, so project it down along the z-axis, and then set up the bounds using r and theta. Let's think about what this looks like from above. If you look at this coming from above, what you're going to see is the circle, this circle right here, where the sphere intersects the cone. So let's find out where the sphere, z equals square root of 4 minus r squared, intersects the cone, z equals r. And we'll do that by setting the two equations equal to each other. So we have r equals the square root of 4 minus r squared, with r squared is 4 minus r squared, squaring both sides, adding r squared to both sides, 
and dividing both sides by two, I get that r squared equals two. So r equals the square root of two. So that circle where the sphere and the cone intersect has a radius of square root of two. So that tells us how we set up the bounds for r, because r is going to have to go from the origin out to that circle. So we go from r equals zero to r equals the square root of two. And then finally, theta is going to have to go all the way around. So theta goes from zero to two pi. So if you carry out this integral, then you should get exactly the same answer you did, or you would have gotten if you finished the integral from the part A of this video. Now because students sometimes ask the question, I'd like to set this up in cylindrical coordinates again, but I would like to put it in the order d r d z d theta, just so that you'll see it. It's a little bit harder to set up the bounds that way, but um, I think it'll be useful for you to see it at least once. So let's erase this part. Recall that we're trying to set up the integral for z dv. So again, we're going to substitute in z is still z, dv is r d something d something d something, but we're going to try setting it up in the order dr dz d theta instead. Now remember, r sorry this r measures the perpendicular distance out from the z-axis. So here's the z-axis. Let me take this profile and just look at that part. So let's say that this is the r-axis and this is the z-axis. The r is measuring the distance out from the z-axis. And this is the shape that we'd get. We have a shape like this taken around the z-axis. Now we're trying to put r on the inside. But look, if I slice down here parallel to r, then I would be going from r equals 0 out to r equals z. Whereas up here, if I go outward, I would be starting off at r equals 0. But I'd be ending on the sphere. So I need to write r equals whatever the equation is for the sphere. So notice that I would have to end up taking two different integrals and adding them together. I'd have to find the integral along, or sorry, the integral over this region one down here plus the region up there. Since I'm talking solids, let me use the letter q instead of r. So I'd have the integral over solid Q1 plus the integral over solid Q2. So let's see. Let's back up a step. This integral would be the triple integral over Q1 of Z dV plus the triple integral over Q2 of Z and let's just set up each one of these integrals separately. So the triple integral over q1, z dv equals, and we'll write down what that one is, and then separately we'll write the triple integral over q2.
Okay, so let's solve a couple problems. Uh, we left ourselves, um, we, we, we left off up here without writing down exactly what r is equal to. Remember that the equation for the sphere we had written as r squared plus z squared equals 4. Earlier we had solved that for z in terms of r. Now let's solve it for r in terms of z. r squared is equal to 4 minus z squared. So r is the square root of 4 minus z squared. And now let's fill in as much as we can of what we have below. We can fill in almost everything. There's just one thing that's going to be left out, and we'll figure that out in a second. So first of all, for Q1, that's this lower solid, R is going to go from 0 to Z. So R goes from 0 to Z. Z is going to go from 0 to whatever number this is. So I'm going to put a little question mark there. That's the piece we haven't figured out yet. Z goes from 0 to that Z coordinate we haven't figured out yet. And I want to go all the way around, so theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. We can also pull things out for Q2. For Q2, R goes from 0 to the sphere. So R goes from 0 to the square root of 4 minus Z squared. Z is going to start at this number that we haven't figured out yet and continue up to 2. Remember that 2 is the radius of the sphere. And theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. So the only thing that we have not yet figured out is the Z coordinate where the sphere and the cone cross. So to figure out what that Z coordinate is, let's set these two equations equal to each other. So I want to figure out where this sphere crosses this cone. So setting them equal, I have z equals the square root of 4 minus z squared. I'll square both sides, add z squared both sides, and divide both sides by 2, and I get z equals the square root of 2. So that was that mystery number. So if I come back and Place this with the square root of 2 there and here. Then I've set this um, integral up in cylindrical coordinates in the order dr, dz, d theta. 